Hi everybody, welcome back to the House of Floss and Fluff. My name is Carrie. Thank you guys for joining me for my 18th Floss Do video. Today is Friday, April the 13th. It's been about two weeks since my last update, so I hope everyone has been doing really, really well in the last two weeks. Um, if you watched my previous video, I was suffering from a really bad head cold. Thankfully, that has dissipated quite a bit. Uh, lots of rest, lots of orange juice, and I'm feeling much better. Still have a little bit of a cough. I'm hoping that will stay at bay while I do this video. Uh, so I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone that sent me well wishes. I really appreciate it. And I know so many other people that I have watched on FlossTube have been suffering from colds and whatnot, so I hope you guys are all feeling a lot better. Uh, I also want to say just a quick thank you and a huge welcome to all of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, comment, and interact with me. It's been such a great, I've had such a great time being part of this community, and I've met some just absolutely wonderful, amazing people. So, thank you guys so much. So, getting into what we've been up to at the House of Floss and Buff. It's been kind of your typical everyday life for the last two weeks. Uh, my car did break down again, which I'm not going to go into the whole story. It is fixed. It is back. Uh, we did have to walk to school this past Monday, my son and I. Uh, my son is spoiled. He hardly ever has to walk to school because I work from home, so I just take him to school every morning. Uh, we can actually count on one hand the number of times that he has had to walk to school, <laughs> but hey, it's okay. Uh, we did take, I did take Lucy with us when we walked to school, so she got a little bit of exercise as well. Oh, if you're new to my channel, Lucy is our year-old Newfoundland puppy. Um, I did, the only part that sucked is I did fall on the ice on our way home on Monday when, after we dropped my son off. Uh, but I'm okay. I was fine. And it wasn't, it wasn't Lucy's fault either. She didn't pull me over or anything. It was my own. I just stepped on a piece of black ice and down I went. So... But that was, that was the excitement. Uh, my son is back in school now. They had spring break last week. So we're back to a full normal week of school. And then coming up some, next week sometime, my husband is taking vacation. So he's going to be home for, I think it's like 9 or 10 days. Uh, we're not doing anything exciting. We're not going anywhere. We don't really have any plans, which is kind of nice. We'll just do whatever we want to do <laughs> while he's home. The only thing I would like is I have a set of built-in shelves in my living room and for the last oh, I think four or five years I've had our Christmas village on these shelves. I, it's a pain to put up and take down every year so I've just left it up and I'm tired of it. I want it to come down and I'm never putting it back. Well, I shouldn't say never but I don't plan on ever putting it back up. Um, but I want to be able to display my cross stitch stuff because I've been stitching a lot more seasonal things. so. Anyway, so those are the, that's the big plan, and then I did mention to my husband that maybe, maybe we could take a ride to our local Joann's. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, we don't have any craft stores local, uh, Walmart. I use Walmart's craft department, that's pretty much it, or I get stuff shipped in. Uh, we do have a Joann's that's like a 45 minute drive, so I mentioned to him maybe if there's a good coupon or something, maybe we'll take a trip in and I can go to Joann's. I would like to, I don't have anything in particular that I'm looking for, except I'm working on organizing my floss. So this is just my DMC floss collection. Excuse me. <coughs> Hopefully that's the only cough. Um, so this is my DMC floss collection. Collection. I should have a full set, but I'm missing some. But anyway, this is the double-sided floss box that you can get from Amazon. And I've got the first side all full. I'm up to 733. Um, and I do have the new, the 34, or is it 35 new DMC colors in here. So I would like to finish organizing this and then make a trip. You know, I would love to go to Joann's and just pick up the rest of the floss. If not, I'll have to place an order to 123 stitch. It's fine. But anyway, so that would be my only big plan. Maybe we'll get to go to Joann's. We'll see. Okay. So let's move on to why you guys are here, and that's to see what I've been working on. So I have several fully finished pieces to show you guys. Um, I have one other finish that I did not get a chance to fully finish yet, and then I have a little bit of progress on a couple of whips, one of which was actually a restart, but we'll get into that. And then 
just a little bit of haul, hardly anything. Of course, like I really needed a lot after we took our trip to the Stitching Bee, but anyway. And then I did dye some fabric, and then we'll talk about plants. Okay, so fully finished pieces. I'm gonna start with the punch needle pieces that I fully finished. So if you saw my previous video, I had worked on these sheep from Doodle Dog Designs on Etsy. And I had already finished one of the, I guess the little white sheep, which I think mine, mine was white and gray. So I also did, so I finished the punching in my last video of my little blue sheep. And now I have put him together into a little pillow or a little stand up little figure. And I think he turned out just super cute. So his legs and his ear, those are just um, black felt. And then I just used a little bit of blue felt on the back as his backing. Um, and so I think he turned out really cute, except I do have to, <laughs> I didn't punch quite enough on the top here, so he's got a couple little bald spots, but that's okay. He's still, he's still super cute. And now I know for next time, let's, I'll just put in an extra, <laughs> an extra row up there to make sure that I have enough of my punches or my loops uh, for when I do the finishing. So super glad, I'm glad to have him done. He's super cute. And you guys know my new obsession is sheep. So then, continuing with punch needle, um, I did a lot of punch needle the last week or last two weeks uh, when I was sick because I was having trouble focusing on cross stitch, and so I could I could focus on the punch needle. I just you know couldn't focus on the cross stitch. So, <coughs> excuse me. This is the other pattern I got uh, from again Doodle Dog Designs on Etsy. And I did both of the houses. Um, I will eventually do the pineapple as well because I am a huge Psych fan, which Psych was a TV show on the USA Network. It's a kind of a mystery. It's a mystery show, but a comedy all wrapped into one. But anyway, um, so I did the two houses. That. So this one is my absolute favorite. This is the little blue house. Um, I didn't use the called for colors. I just used what I had on hand. So I don't. I think this was 926 is the blue color that I used, and I believe the gold was 3823, and then the red here is actually one of the Valdani threads that I bought back in January. I think I bought them, and I've been afraid to use them because they're a little bit expensive, and I wanted to get a little bit better at doing punch needle before I broke into using the expensive threads. <laughs> but I loved using the Valdani, and I think it came out really cool. The variegation in it is really nice. So I'm super happy with this one. Love this one. Oh, and then he's just finished. A little bit of felt for the chimneys and then backed with just a little bit of felt. And then, like I said, I did the white house as well, but mine is white and gray because I wanted it to look kind of old um, and I don't really want to say decrepit, but old and, and, you know, just aged. Aged. There we go. Uh, so I put a little bit of gray in mine. And then the roof is done in two different browns. I believe it was done in, oh, why did I punch that in? 436 and 437, I think, something like that. And then the actual whole house is punched in. The gray part is 648, and the crew part is crew and 712. So, love this one too. It came out really nice. So, so those were my punch needle finishes. And those will go in the cubby, uh, or my vintage milk crate that my husband attached to the wall for me. And I will say too, if you're new to punch needle, if you're interested in working on punch needle, Doodle Dog Designs is a great shop on Etsy to get patterns, especially... I feel for beginners. I still consider myself a beginner. I haven't done that many projects yet. And I love these. They're small and they don't use a whole lot of colors. Plus, like especially these patterns, there's a lot of places where it's just a big chunk of color. And so you really get to work on your punching technique. Um, so just throwing that out there if you want to start punching needle, I would definitely recommend uh, Doodle Dog Designs on Etsy. Okay. Cross stitch finishes. So I did finish another Biscornia. This is from the Floss Box, and this was from her website. She has an Etsy shop and a website. I got this pattern off of her website, 
And so it is houses and sheep. <laughs> and it's super cute. And the bottom is very simple. And there it is all put together. Uh, now what I like about the floss box is a lot of her patterns, uh, you don't have to squish them in the middle. Like, you know how you see most of them are squished? These ones, most of her patterns don't really seem to have the squished middle part or her uh, model stitches that she shows. Uh, so I did, I did take a couple small buttons and just see, you know, if I, if I liked how they looked in there. And actually I didn't. They, um, I didn't really like how they looked. They covered up a lot of the stitching and so I just left it. And I think it's just really cute, just the way that it is, like that. And this was stitched on 14 Count Ada that I dyed with tea and coffee. So, super cute, and just the called for DMCs. So, love that, and I'm still obsessed with Biscorn use. <laughs> so, that is all thanks to Jennifer Upton and her great Biscorn use swap on Facebook, which our first swap is closed. Uh, Sign-ups are closed, but of course, you can still come and join us on the Facebook group. Uh, very excited about that. I'll talk about that in coming up in plans. So then, the next thing I worked on. So I had mentioned, I believe I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I, that I wanted to do a seasonal banner using the mason jar rings and lids. Uh, so if you watch my previous video, I did a finish in mason jar using mason jar rings and lids, and I wanted to do a seasonal finish. So basically, you know. One that would say spring, summer, fall, winter, etc. Okay? So I found an alphabet that I really liked. This is from Sub Rosa Designs. And I just, I love the lettering on this. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch this whole alphabet eventually. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just really like this whole thing. But I liked the letters and I thought it would look really cute as a spring banner. So that's what I work on. Uh, it took me two days to stitch up six little letters. And then I also used, um, from the Little Stitcher Shop, I used some of her designs here for the flowers and butterflies and stuff that you'll see here in a second on my letters. Now, I had every intention of when I started stitching this, these were going to go in the mason jar rings. So I stitched them on one big piece of fabric, figuring and putting what I thought was plenty of space in between. Nope. Went to cut them out and start putting them on the mason jar rings. I did not leave myself enough space. So I had all these really pretty letters that I stitched using Cosmo threads and dinky dye silks and they wouldn't fit in the rings. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? I have to figure out something because I can't, <laughs> this has to be displayed. So, this is what I came up with. This is definitely not what I had in mind when I started this project. But I think it's super cute. So I got the little flowers here. So this is actually a mason jar ring. And I just tied fa um, X fabric that I had and a little bit of twine and then I just stuck it in there with a corsage pin and this this oops this is backed on a piece of foam or uh, styrofoam that I used to make cubes so like I said so I could stick pins in and, and that was nice that I could just stick pins in and place things and so and then the flowers are just placed into there so there's my like I said, so there's my letters that I got from the Sub Rosa Designs, and then like I said, the cute little bunnies and the butterflies and all that is from the Little Stitcher Shop patterns. So, it's cute. It's not, like I said, it's not exactly what I had in mind when I started stitching the letters, but I think it turned out really nice. So, now I can get started on doing the summer letters, uh, and this time I'm going to do them individually one at a time so I make sure that I have enough fabric to fit them in the ring, <laughs> the mason jar rings this time. Okay, so I have one other finish, not fully finished yet, just the stitching, and this is from uh, the Little Stitcher Shop uh, Garden Treasures pattern, and I did this one right here, the girl with the little wheelbarrow. I just thought that was super cute. 
So here she is all finished. And this fabric is one of the new fabrics that I dyed last weekend. This was just done with uh, Cocoa Brown Rit, which has a really nice uh, red base to it. And I stitched this in all of the called for DMCs. I just switched, uh, like this bottom border here is supposed to be stitched in the white. I went ahead and stitched that in the gold. And then all of these little, I don't know if they're butterflies or little bugs or whatever, they're all supposed to be stitched in this green, this dark green color. And I just stitched two of them in the gold as well. So she's super cute. Um, I'm going to probably finish this into a little pillow either probably today, maybe, or maybe this weekend. So hopefully I should have this one all finished for next, for my next video. But really like that. Okay. So those are my finishes. Moving on to whips. And there's really not a lot. There should, you would think for two weeks of stitching, I should have a stack of whips. No. So one was actually, it's a whip, but it's a restart of a whip. So this is, uh, this is the Halloween Viscornu that uh, Doreen Jones designed for Lakeside Needlecraft. And this was a freebie that, I don't know if it was available on their website or if it was available on their Facebook group. I don't remember. But anyway, I had started this. I showed this back, uh, I think, in October when I was stitching, when I was working on it. And so I had started this. This was the start of it. And I... It was called for to be stitched on, or the display model, I shouldn't say the called for, the display model was stitched on orange fabric with black thread. And so I switched mine and I started it on black fabric which with orange thread. And I do like it. It's stitching up nice. My stitches look, you know, pretty good. But I really don't care. I don't really like stitching on black. Ada, I, you know, it's just, an, you know, it's a little bit more tricky to do. I, I, I can do it, it's just a little bit more time consuming. So, I put this one away. I was not in love with this. It was okay. But I put it away, and of course now that I've been kind of obsessed with Biscor News, this one popped back into my head that, you know, I really should work on this. And I also had this really nice fabric that I had dyed. Hold on, I've got, it's stuck in here. Um, so I dyed this fabric for a different project. This is the fabric. So I dyed this back in, let's see if I can get the color, that's pretty good. Dyed this back in January of this pre, of this year, and the, the project that I dyed this for, this was the wrong color. <coughs> it just didn't, it do, it's not going to work. So I say, you know, of course I saved it, and I was like, you know, this would work really nice for a Halloween project. Yep, it does. <laughs> So there is my Halloween Viscornu restarted, and I am using, this came in the Dinky Dyes Oops Pack that I showed you guys in my last video. This was one of the variegated ones that they had. It's called Halloween, and it's really nice. It's got black and purple and green and orange in it. It's really pretty. It's really pretty to work, to look, to work with. Uh, so I'm, I decided to put that into the four corners. There's the little... There's a pumpkin in each corner, and so I figured I would do the pumpkins in that really pretty variegated silk. And then the black is just straight 310 DMC. And I absolutely love this now. Love this. So uh, I cannot wait to finish this. And I've only worked on this, I think, a couple days. And I mean, I'm already further than I was um, on my first start. <laughs> so you can see them together. So I probably will go back and finish this one because they look really different, you know, uh, with, with the different fabric and the different floss. So I'll probably go ahead and finish this one and have a nice little start on my Halloween Biscornu decorations. But yeah, I, lo I love this now. I don't want to put this one down. I want to keep working on this. So, And silks are really nice to work with. <laughs> really nice. Um, I have, this is my first time ever stitching with silks, and so I like it. So then, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. So last night when I finished this piece, it was still early, and so I decided to pull out another project, and I wanted something that only had 
like one color in it, which would be my long dog sampler. So this is the piece that my husband picked out and wanted me to stitch for him. This is St. George. I'm stitching this one over one on 28 count Monaco. And the color, the color that I'm using is 820. Let's see if I can get my cam if my phone will pick up on that. So I finished this part, this little motif or the corner here, and then I started and bringing it down and of course started bringing it that way across as well. And this was a lot of fun to work on. So I, it's fun. I like using just one strand of thread. That makes things a lot easier. And just one color is really nice. So you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of color changes. So even though one over one is a little, <laughs> can be a little tricky on the eyes sometimes. And my, my eyesight is not very good. So, <laughs> but not bad, not bad. And it's coming along. So this one is a lot of fun to work on. And that's it. <laughs> that is all I worked on. Like I said, I feel like there should be a stack of whips here a mile long, you know, a mile high. And no, that, that is it. So, haul. Again, I don't really have a lot, which I shouldn't have a lot after everything that I got at the Stitching Bee. <laughs> which we went to the Stitching Bee back in, in March. So, I did get my Victorian Moto sampler threads. I am a member, I am part of her Floss of the Month Club. These are the limited edition ones. And aren't those gorgeous? So I know these have been shown on other channels, I, but I absolutely love these. I love her threads. Let's see. They're just, they're so pretty. And they're really nice to stitch with. So I stitched with uh, some of these in that little spring banner that I did, and a few other little small projects. Are so nice to stitch with. It reminds me of stitching with the Cosmo threads. Like I don't have to use a lot of thread conditioner with these. I usually tend to use thread conditioner with pretty much everything, but um, the Cosmo threads and, and these I do not have to use thread conditioner with, which is nice. So then the, the only other thing that I got that came in, I actually ordered these back in February. So these were fabrics that were put on back order. I normally do try to take things out of the bag, but the Newfie puppy is has been running around all day, and every now and then she gets really curious about my cross stitch fabric, and I don't need drool all over it. So stuff has been staying in bags lately. Anyway, so these fabrics are from um, Yield Stitchery. These are by Picture It Plus. This is sand. It's a 28 count Lugana. I don't know if it's gonna the color is gonna show up, but it's a very nice light neutral. That's pretty good. Uh, so I think I bought this one in the hopes of using it on the Heritage Sampler from Plum Street Samplers. And I think I bought a big enough piece. It's 18 by 27. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to measure. Um, I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure I checked one before I ordered it. But knowing my brain some days, I don't know. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'll use that for tons of things. And then the other one I got, this is another picture of Plus Fabric. And I've seen this one. So many people have used this, have stitched on this or have shown this. It is Wren by Picture Plus. And I just, I just love this. I just love this. I just think it's so cool. And so a really nice neutral. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on it, but I am sure I will find something. So, so those are my last two fabrics to come in. And that's it, you guys. That's it. No more haul. So then I did, I did dye some of my own fabric. So I got it in my head. I wanted to dye fabric last weekend. Basically, I blame, <laughs> I blame Priscilla and Chelsea in the best possible way. I was watching one of their videos, and they had mentioned they dyed some fabric with RIT, and then they went ahead and took that fabric that they dyed with RIT and over-dyed it in coffee. And I was like, why have I never thought of doing that? I don't know. So that's what I did. So I dyed a whole bunch of fabric with with RIT and then I over dyed it with coffee to kind of grunge it up. So this was a yellow, I think it's like the sunshine yellow, which I have no idea why I dyed yellow, um, yellow fabric. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I don't like the color yellow, not really. But now I love this because I 
over dyed it and grunged it and it's got some really nice modeling on it and it's not a super bright yellow anymore and so love that and this is Ada this is 14 count Ada so then these two one is a this is a Monaco and this is an Ada this was using uh, the color wine and again I just hit it with the tea and coffee dye and put it in the oven and I don't know, I just noticed a lot of my fabrics as I was going through had this line. I have never noticed that before. I don't know, it must have been the way that I put them on the pan this time to um, bake them in the oven. But the nice thing with these is that I have another, the other side doesn't have, obviously does not have as much modeling since this was the side that was facing down when it was in the oven. So it's really nice. It gives me a good, it gives me a good, um, choice of what I, of what I want to work on. You know, do I want to work on the really grungy side or the not so grungy side? So those and then then there's a whole bunch here. I won't show <laughs> there's a whole bunch here. They're all kind of the same color palette. Ooh. They're kind of springy green that has been then grunged so they all, most of these used a lime green dye, which is by Tulip Dye, and then the Kelly Green from RIT, the Sunshine Yellow, I think it's Sunshine Yellow, uh, from RIT, and what was the other one? Emerald. So they're all pretty much the same, just maybe, you know, a little different modeling. And again, the same thing. They have one side that is, again that line, <laughs> but that is, is really grungy looking, really aged, and then a side that's not so bad. So lots, lots of options there for stitching. So then, okay, last piece of grungy fabric. This was, this was just straight up emerald dye, or color, writ color, uh, just emerald, and like I said, I know this line isn't this crazy <laughs> I've never noticed that on any other fabrics that I've that I've uh, coffee dyed so I don't know oh well it works and then the last one <coughs> excuse me apologize so like I said I had dyed some with the cocoa brown so this one is just straight cocoa brown uh, writ dye and I only set this in here for probably I don't know, like two, three minutes. I said this is a uh, 28 count even weave. So it takes the dye better than Ada. Well, not better, but it darkens quicker than Ada. So this one is also, this one is actually one of my favorites that I had no intention of actually dyeing. <laughs> I just, this is at the very end. This, the dark color is the cocoa brown color, and then the lighter pink is petal pink. Now, from on the video you can't see but there are there's a really big error in this fabric <laughs> I love this fabric but I don't know if it'll pick up oh it might a little bit so I had this fabric in the container I put the cocoa brown on it and then I was like okay it needs something else and so I went and I grabbed a mason jar that I had of the petal paint color because when I'm done if I have a lot of excess dye, I'll just put it into a mason jar and label it, and then I can use it later. So I took the, the mason jar of the petal pink color, and I didn't mix it up. I just took it and threw it on to this fabric, forgetting that the dye settles, and there is a whole bunch of granules on the bottom. So all those granules got on here, and so there are splotches of color everywhere. Like I said, it's not going to show up. I don't think it's going to show up on the camera at all or on the video at all. But there are. There's splotches of color everywhere. It's okay. It's just for me, so it's not a big deal. I don't. I think it's kind of pretty. I don't mind it. But I, am, I do want to try and recreate this fabric without all of the splotches of color. So, or like the little granules, I should say. You know, the little, there's, there you can kind of see that. See how that happened? That's on this entire piece of fabric. So, you know, it was a mistake. It was my fault. I was, you know, 
I was in a hurry because I was at the end and I just wanted to finish what I was doing. It's no big deal. Like I said, it's just for me, so it's all good. So, that's everything. That's my haul. It's my new fabric that I dyed. Um, so we're going to talk about plants. And we're going to talk about plants in just a second. I will be right back, okay? So if you're new to my channel, uh, the reason I do that is my phone will automatically cut me off at 32 minutes. So instead of my phone cutting me off, I cut myself off <laughs> for a few seconds and then come right back. So that was my that was my haul that I got and that was the dyed fabric that I did this past weekend. So last thing would be plants. Uh, so the number one thing I want to work on is my Biscornu for the Great Biscornu Swap that is being run by Jennifer Upton on Facebook. Uh, the first swap is closed, but certainly, you know, come feel free and join that Facebook group. There will be more swaps in the future. So, I, but I would like to have my swap done, uh, or my scoring you done for that swap. Uh, the theme is spring, <laughs> so I'm super excited about stitching the one, the pattern that I've picked out. But I would like to have it done before we start into mania. Uh, so that's kind of one of my big goals. And then the other goal I would like is I do have a couple smaller whips that are close to being done I would like to get those finished and just and just knock them out so that's kind of that's where I'm at I'd like to get some things finished before we start into May and the craziness that is mania <laughs> so speaking of which mania I am planning this year I am going to participate uh, I'm planning on participating I am going to do 18 new starts for 2018 they are all going to be Viscornews or Punch Needle Sorry about that. Um, so I, the reason I'm throwing in some punch needle in there is I still do get some of the headaches and a little bit of the fuzziness, like I said, due to the sinus problems. So I'm not always able to stitch every night, and so I figured I better throw in a few punch needle just in case, just in case I need that. So I'm really, really looking forward to mania. I'm having so much fun picking out the Biscornu patterns. I, I can't wait. And it's like killing me right now to not start them all right now. <laughs> It's like, no, 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 you have to wait. Anyway, so the only other thing I've been considering in regards to Mania, and I wanted to throw this out there and see what your thoughts were since you guys watch watch me on Vlastube and watch other people on Vlastube, um, is how I'm going to record my videos in regards to Mania. Like I said, uh, my phone shuts me off after 32 minutes, and then I believe it records for 15 minutes, and then it goes down from there. So if I do long videos, so if I were to wait till like the 19th and show you guys everything that I've worked on for the previous 18 days in regards to mania, it would probably be potentially be a long video. So I it would just be a lot of editing. Um, the other thing that I have considered is doing a video every four days, and so I would show you guys what I've worked on for the previous three days. And those videos would be short. I would hope to keep those around 10, maybe 15 minutes at the most. It would strictly be what I have worked on the previous three days in regards to Mania. And then, you know, towards the end of March, we'll get back to doing normal videos of all of the whips I've worked on, any FFOs I have, haul, all that kind of stuff. Uh, or I've also considered just going and trying, trying to go back and do weekly videos, which would be, again, at the beginning of May, it would just be a weekly video of what I have worked on for Mania, and then obviously we jump back into doing the normal videos with, with everything. So I'm just curious, what are your thoughts? One big long video, do a few short, you know, shorter videos, or uh, week, weekly videos? I'm just curious. Uh, it'll kind of depend on how much time I have, you know. <laughs> and what we're doing in May, I have right now we have no plans, but you never know, you know, where life's going to take you. So we'll see, you know, but I'm just kind of curious to hear what your thoughts are since you guys do watch, you watch me and you watch other, you know, floss tubers. What do you think? You know, let me know. So that is it. Uh, so I am, let's see, today I'm going to go ahead and I don't know what I'm going to work on yet. I haven't decided. I don't know. That's always fun. Isn't that fun when you're like, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to work on, and then it'll just kind of hit you, like, this is what you want to work on. That's always fun to me. So we'll see what grabs me, what grabs my attention today. So I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastic weekend filled with lots of stitching and lots of, you know, happy, 
every, I hope everyone's just happy and healthy and you guys are all doing really well. And I will see you guys hopefully um, in a couple weeks. So, bye everybody.